The Lord be with you. Okay, this one is dangerous. Uh, so help me out here and bear with me uh, because I am, I'm treading on a landmine that is huge and I really don't want it to blow up on my face. So this is me saying, help, help me understand. Okay, because this is me talking about Matthew's meals, but it's my question about every ministry that we are a part of. Okay, so let me start with what I love about what I heard about Matthew's meals. Matthew's meals has, you know, three things that I care deeply about and really, really love. Uh, one is people's eyes light up when they talk about Matthew's meals, and there's an energy there. And it's the kind of energy that I'm looking for when we start talking about the direction that King of Glory Lutheran Church is, you know, is, is, is God's calling for us, right? Okay, uh, that's the kind of energy, and I would like it to see, you know, all directed, you know, all our horses in a line, all of us in alignment, all of us in agreement, uh, and have that kind of energy, that kind of passion, that enthusiasm that says, yeah, let's go, let's do this, and you're saying, well, then why are you saying, hold on? Okay, it's because I have questions. So uh, second thing I really love about this, there's food. Getting people to gather around food is huge for the gospel. And so Matthew's Meals does that. Uh, third, uh, people are serving. I love that. People are serving, you know, and we're reaching out to, to people uh, in our community. That is all awesome. So help me understand how uh, basically two questions, okay? Uh, here, here's my first question. The answer to the, to the question is, in your mind, Matthew's meals. And so I'm going, okay, so the question is, who is God calling us to reach such that you think that Matthew's meal is just the perfect ministry to invite those people to? My understanding is that Matthew's Meals is a community meal, that there's a lack of sense of community in our community. You know, people are, they're, they're alone, they're disconnected, uh, they're in need of love from other people, and therefore you see Matthew's Meals as being the solution to those people. Uh, to which I ask, who are those people? Who are those people and how, how are you getting them to Matthew's Meals? And how did you determine that Matthew's Meals is the right solution, what those people need, the next step for them? Okay, then the next question I have is, how does Matthew's Meals fit in helping people grow in love, being loved by other people and love for God? Okay. And again, you're saying this is a vital part of it. And how does that connect then to all of our other ministries? So it's not just one ministry sitting by itself, but it's connected to our overall discipleship of helping people experience the love of others and eventually the love of God. Okay. And so let me, let me draw that out for you. So, you know, where is this, where does this fit that you're saying, this is the perfect next step for the person in category what? You know, uh, it's part of leadership development because you have people reaching out to these people. But who, again, who are these people? And I kind of want like names and locations, if you know what I mean. Okay. So how does this fit in our overall, you know, where are all the ministries that help a person get and how does Matthew's Meals fit in that? Okay. And so the, the, this color chart of helping move people toward openness to the gospel and then up in awareness of the gospel of Jesus Christ. They experience the love of God. They become more open to the gospel. And then they experience, sorry, they, the love of God through us and then the love of God through Jesus. Okay, that's important. Uh, so, you know, the way one person sowing, watering, reaping, discipling, where does Matthew's meals fit in that? And Again, is it the right ministry to reach those people, the right next step for whoever those people are that you're saying need this? And again, personal invitation is huge. Who are you personally inviting to this ministry that you say, yes, this is the perfect next step for them? So I, I showed this before and I'll say it again. Uh, what I've seen in most churches I've been a part of is a splatter graph 
of ministries that are focused on a very particular group of people and are disconnected from the overall ministry of the church. They're, in other words, when a person starts in a ministry, they go until they burn out of that ministry and then they leave. Uh, but while they're in that ministry, they stay in that ministry until they die or they get burned out or they leave or they go do something else. How does it connect to how does it connect to uh, all the other ministries of helping them move toward growing in, in experiencing the love of God through others and then help them grow up toward growing in love through Jesus? Growing in the love of God through Jesus. Did I get that right? Okay. So this is kind of how I feel about ministries. So uh, this is from Cutter's Point uh, down in Gig Harbor, the other one, the other location. No matter what the question is, coffee is the answer. And, and that's what I'm afraid I've heard of with, with certain ministries. It's, well, it doesn't matter what the question is. The answer is, and you fill in the blank. Uh, you know, the answer is, you know, a Sunday school or a youth group or choir or Matthew's meals or, you know, whatever, whatever it is, that's the answer. Now we got to come up with the right question. And I just kind of go, whoa, whoa, wait, wait, wait. How, you know, again, who are we actually trying to reach? Is this actually the right answer for the question of who we're trying to reach? And how does it connect to all the other ministries that we do? And that's why I'm just going, hold on, hold on. I need to see how this works, how this fits in. Uh, so I'm a bit careful of saying, you know, is this really the answer? Because I, I, I want to I wanna hear that, not just go, doesn't matter what the question is. The answer is coffee. Yeah. So again, you know, thinking in terms of inviting people to the next step, you know, from zero to one, to two to three to four, you know, from, you know, a person who's totally disengaged from the church to our first contact with that person, to repeated contacts, loving contacts with that person, to helping them experience the love of God in Christ in a smaller gathering, to then helping them lead other people like Oh, through a personal invitation. That's huge. Did I mention how important a personal invitation is? It's huge. Yeah. If you don't have personal invitations, um, your church is not going to be healthy. That's been my experience. All right. And again, we want to we want to help our leaders minister to people in every step of the way. We don't want to miss a step, otherwise, people get stuck where, where they are in that step. Okay, because you can have all sorts of wonderful ministries that are serving people. You know, people are experiencing the love of God through those, those ministries. And 20 years later, they're still experiencing the love of God through those ministries. And they're still stuck exactly where they are in their growth in experiencing the love of God through others. They're still stuck where they are in experiencing the love of God through Christ. Uh, and so that's kind of uh, where I, I kind of go, okay. If a person gets stuck in their spiritual growth and growth and love for God and others, that's fine unless we're not inviting them to the next step, right? And so that's my question again about Matthew's meals. I'll try to reiterate this because help me understand how this is, you know, the perfect answer for the who we're trying to reach with the gospel, you know, because a meal where people are being served and, and being loved. Uh, that sounds so wonderful, but who are you inviting to this? Who are you trying to reach with this? And tell me how you're just going, yep, this is perfect. This, this group of people in this neighborhood uh, that we're going to reach in this way, uh, we're, we're going to invite them. And this is the perfect thing for them. Okay. That's what I want to hear. And, and then how does it connect to all five steps, you know, zero to one, to two, to three, to four, so that no one gets stuck, you know, five, 10, 20 years from now, where they're still in Matthew's meals, still coming every single week, and they've never been invited to get to know Jesus, uh, never been invited to anything. Well, I need to be more specific. They haven't been invited to God's next step for them, you know, because it might be, you know, negative eight to negative seven. Okay. All right. 
So again, the steps, making sure we have steps for every step of the way, right? All right, I think that's it. All right. If you could help me understand that, I would really appreciate it. Because uh, again, what I feel like is that the uh, cart has been placed in front of the horse and now we're trying to get the horse in front of the cart by hook or by crook. So again, it's nothing against Matthew's Meals. Matthew's Meals sounds amazingly wonderful. I'm just wondering if it's the answer, or I should say part of the answer to where God is leading us as a congregation. Okay, so if you could, if you could help me out there, that would, be, that would be totally awesome. Okay, hope I'm being positive and encouraging. Yeah, again, put your, put your comments, put your feedback. Let me know you listen to this. Uh, let me know what you found helpful. Uh, let me know what you disagree with. You know, I'm, I'm stumbling my way through this just like you. All right, God's peace be with you. Amen.